Welcome to episode number two of the Jeff Fulcino podcast. Today, we're here with James Mondo from Mondo Septic and Drainage, and we're talking everything septic. But before we do, I'd like to introduce our very first show sponsor. It is the one and the only Fulcino Vineyard, uh, something near and dear to my heart. It's my family's vineyard in Hollis, New Hampshire. So if you haven't seen it, haven't checked it out, please go check them out. Um, you can taste in person or you can even buy online. It's fulcinovineyard.com. So thanks to them for sponsoring. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. Excellent. Thanks for having me. We're talking all things septic. I guess maybe kind of introduce yourself, um, introduce your company, kind of give us the backstory of, you know, who James Mondo is, what, you know, what um, Mondo Septic is all about, how it started. Just give us the history of it. It started out as um, Brucey Mondo Septic Service. Mm -hmm. uh, he's my uncle. He started it back in the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. In Monroe? In Monroe. Bought a backhoe, started started getting jobs and doing some drainage stuff and some septic stuff. And before you know it, he opened up the business. And, and, and my grandfather, his father, actually quit his job to um, partner up with him and, and get the business going because uh, he saw the money that was coming in and decided, hey, let's, let's do this. And, um, and I just hopped into it um, young as an early teenager and... As soon as I graduated high school, I just started working right into, the business. right into it. I just ran with it. And now I actually have my uh, older son, Josh, is r helping me run the business also uh, now. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. So we got several several generations, generations of Mondos. Generations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Generations of experience. Cool. So I know you, you, you see Mondo Septic all over. You get the big trucks mm -hmm. and uh, you also do construction and not just septic but you guys also do site work right and yes drainage as well yes drainage work site work uh basically anything that has to do with excavating i guess for some people they may not be familiar with septic if you're from the city chances are you, you've never even heard of a septic i know mm -hmm. um having worked with buyers coming from new york oftentimes they're very confused when i say you know you don't have city sewer here. You have a septic. So, and they're just like, "What do you mean? Exactly. What does that so mean? How does that work? <laughs> what does it mean?" So, for those who don't know, can you explain what exactly is a septic system and how does it work? Well, first of all, I'll tell you, a sewer um, it works the same way when it leaves the house. So, all the fixtures in the house, all the plumbing fixtures, uh, toilets, washing machines, sinks. Um, kitchen anything that drains water basically in the house showers tubs goes all through the piping down into usually the basement mm -hmm. or underneath the slab if you don't have a basement and it goes out of a four four inch pipe usually mm -hmm. and sewer it will go out to the road into a main sewer big eight inch pipe and then go to a sewer plant or pipes even bigger than that all different sizes but it goes to a sewer plant gets treated and then gets released from there into the ocean or river, whatever. Septic system, there is no sewers. So what they do is it's, it's an on-site wastewater system. So any of the um, fluid that comes out of the house, any liquid that comes out of the house will go into a holding tank and then to a leaching area, which leaches into the ground. Mm -hmm. So the septic tank will separate the solids, the soap scum, Toilet paper, all that stuff. Everything we'll, that goes down the drain. Everything that goes down the drain, which we'll talk about later, what is supposed to go down the drain. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then just liquid will go into the leaching area, and it'll leach into the ground. The ground will basically soak it up okay. underground. Moving on to specific to home buyers who may not be familiar with the septic, um, you know, we have a home inspection, but a lot of people don't understand. Um, that we also need to inspect the septic. Mm -hmm. And that's part of kind of what you guys do as well. You, you, mm -hmm. uh, inspe you offer inspection services. Mm -hmm. So can you walk us through kind of why it's important and how exactly important it is 
um, that you inspect the septic system before you buy a home? That's a simple answer because a septic system these days are anywhere from, I would say on the cheap side would be low 20s, say 20 grand cheapest to up to 50, mm-hmm. you know, depending on the size of the house and, and, and how good the soil is uh, on the property. So that would be the number one reason is if you if you were to buy a house and you don't check this out, yep, the replacement cost, the rep- you end up going through with the closing and then you own it. Uh, so super important. It's one of those things that's kind of like roofs, furnaces, very it's a major major component yes. of the home. Yes, gotcha. So super important, buyers. Make sure you get your septic inspection. Um, so the next kind of question I'd have is. What are kind of some of the common problems that can, can occur with the septic system? And maybe go back to kind of what we were talking about a little bit earlier about, you know, how, what's the difference between sewer and septic and how you, um, you know, maintain it and, you know, more importantly, what you can and cannot flush down the toilet. I always tell everybody, all my customers, that the only thing you want to put down any drains or toilets is toilet paper. That's it. No feminine products, condoms, um, any paper towels, any anything else other than toilet paper. So maybe just walk us through what you do during an inspection, and you know, from you know the the site work to the as built. Maybe explain what those things are, yeah. and then uh, walk us through what you would be doing with uh, a buyer at an inspection the the first thing i would do is if someone calls for an inspection whether it be a realtor or a home buyer it would my first question is 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 there an as-built does anyone have an as-built so maybe explain what an as-built is and and where you know where that came from and and where people can find that information all as-builts are at some homeowners have them in files uh but health departments yeah, they should all be on record with the town yes. at your town health department. Most of the time, it's at your town health department, right. at least in Connecticut. And is. there's di- health districts in Connecticut. So they might not be at the town hall. Got it. It could be at a health district, which could be like the, like Shelton, if you're looking for an as-built, it would be at Naugatuck Nog- Valley Health District, which is in Seymour. Right. So, so it's you a, have to yeah. determine where, where yeah. that health department is. So a health yeah. district would encompass multiple towns. Correct. Got it. Okay. So walk us through kind of what you would do on an inspection and what you're looking for specifically. The first thing we look for is a tank. Mm-hmm. So we try to find the septic tank, open that up. And that's kind of the heartbeat of the system right there because that's where it intercepts the liquid from the house. The, mm-hmm. That's the first interception. So we open up the tank, the inlet, the outlet, and we see what's going on with the tank. We look at the condition of the tank. We look at the level in the tank to see what the levels are in the tank how much solids are in the tank, if the tank is in good condition or not. Um, and then and then we go from there. And that that basically determines, and the age of the tank I will look at. at. If, if the date isn't on the as-built or there's not an as-built available, I have to kind of determine all that stuff myself, um, which is, you know, over the years, you know, you f- find ways to do it. Okay. Um, and then we go on from there. So we, and then we go on to maybe open up some D-boxes or leaching fields or probe the leaching fields to see what's going on out there. And, um, you know, it, it, it's not really cookie cutter where every inspection is the same. I mean, there's multiple different types of systems. Correct. Too, correct. Depending yeah. On they the... all basically work the same, but there are different applications for different properties. As far as, can, can you explain what, so I know you talked about, we talked about the tank, like the, the fields itself. I and mean, when we, we, when we talk about the tank, you know, solids remain in the tank and liquids go out into the fields. Kind of, Explain how that functions. Well, the newer tanks, there's two compartments. So if you could picture um, this room. Mm-hmm. So we have a rectangle room here. This is a tank. There'd be a wall two-thirds of the way on the tank. There'd be a wall with a s- open slit that the yep. liquid goes through. So that wall stops any sludge that drops to the bottom of the tank from getting to the outlet side, and it stops any soap scum or anything that floats and forms a crust on the top from getting to the outlet side. And then the new tanks actually have a filter that the water passes through. So just effluent goes out to the leaching area. But the older tanks do not have filter and some don't even have the baffle, the walls. Mm -hmm. There's just T baffles 
which a lot of them are broken off on the old tanks, which is something we look for. And old concrete baffles that are falling apart. That, you know, those are the things we look for. All right. Awesome. And when that happens, the solids and everything get out into the fields, mm. which will cause a problem and fail the fields. What would fail a system when you're when you're doing an inspection on a, a septic? And uh, what are you if if you fail a system, what does that look like, and what kind of happens from there? Several things happen to fail a system. So <clears throat> one thing could happen where say the leaching fields and everything is deep underground and um, the system is full and filling up, instead of it popping ground and causing a wet spot in the yard, yeah. it would back up into the tank, then the tank would fill up and it would back up the pipe towards the house. And then the house would start filling up and when you flush the toilet on the, the lower right. floors, it's not going to so go the, down. Those or... are the horror stories that you hear about where you have sewage backing Correct. up into the That's house. That's one way where the yeah. liquid actually backs up. Another way would be as if it's bleeding out. Say you're on a slope and the fields are down, like mm -hmm. your house. There would be, you know, something wet that you would see come up right. in the yard. Oftentimes, I think you 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 would see, if, especially in the spring and summertime, you would see bright green grass yes. growing. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Amazingly well. Yep. <laughs> That's a telltale sign. You, yep. you actually might see a strip because the leaching fields are say three feet wide, and they'll be fifty to seventy, eighty feet long. And you'll see a bright green strip in the yard. And that, that means the liquid's getting to the top, right. which is so full. You might be in trouble. Correct. <laughs> so we talked about, you know, what happens when it when a septic fails or when you fail it. But what leads to that? I and mean, what problems can occur? You know, in other words, what homeowners can do to prevent something like that from happening? I'd say the, like the, the happening. two main things that fail a system would be overusage. Mm -hmm. So they'll have ex they'll just excessive running water in the house long showers they do laundry tons of laundry every day leaky toilets laundry is a, is a killer a leaky toilets is also um you know a killer and um also if you have an older tank and uh, the baffles aren't working correctly like i said a lot of the sludge goes out the pipes into the leaching areas clog them up and that's what no backs it up. So those are two main reasons why a, a, you know, a system fails. Or they don't pump it. I, I pump all my customers every year yes. because 90% of them have filters, and those filters clog up. So the last thing you want is it to become an emergency because if right. you go two years, pretty much guaranteed that filter is going to clog up inside of two years, yeah. which means it becomes an emergency because it backs up into the house. And then I have to go out there. It's usually on a weekend or a night. And, <laughs> An emergency. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. So there's more costs involved. So the cost, and also when you pump the tank out, it gives the system a chance to subside a little. Because it takes you, it takes a normal house about a week or so to fill that tank back up before it spills over into the leaching area. So it gives the leaching area time to just relax, if you will, yep. for, for yeah. a week or so and, and let the water go down and the pressure go down. So, so a lot of the literature and language that I've seen, if you look online, it's three to five years. Yeah. And I, I, I never understood why for how much, yes. you know, this is something, everything that goes down there, I think about how many laundry you do, how many showers, mm -hmm. you get the big like hot tub bathtubs. Yep. You know, that's a ton of water. Right. And uh, maybe kind of go over like how big are those uh, holding tanks in, that are in the ground? And well, they're from a thousand gallons to two thousand gallons, depending on how many bedrooms. It goes by bedrooms. Gotcha. So, um, a three bedroom home usually has a thousand gallon tank. Four four bedroom home, five bedroom home usually a twelve fifty, and then fifteen hundred gallon for six bedroom and and up from there. That, those are the new standards. The old standards were a little different, where the tank had to be a little bit bigger for five and six bedroom, but they've uh, scaled back on that. Or is there anything else that a homeowner can do to help maintain the septic outside of kind of what we talked about, the do's and don'ts of what goes down the toilet? and, and what No, as long there? as, uh, you know, no powdered soaps, because powdered soaps are pretty bad on if you have cast iron piping, okay. stuff like that. So powdered soaps and those, those um, what are those pods? The pod, the plastic Tide pods, pods you, you throw in. Oh, you mean they like do the not Redex this, stuff? They, no, the, the Tide, the pods that you throw into either the dishwasher or you okay. throw them into the laundry. 
they don't dissolve. They dissolve enough where it it opens. Yeah. But we find them in the tent, and they and they will clog. Yeah. They will clog up. So I would say don't use those. Even though they say it's yeah, septic yeah. safe, it's not. Biodegradable, yeah. septic safe. Yeah. <laughs> so just toilet paper. That's it. And no and no powdered soap. So j- liquids and gels are are fine, but powdered soaps usually isn't a good thing. Are there any common misconceptions uh, that people may have about septic systems that you see uh, in, in your line of work? A lot of homeowners don't know anything about the leaching area. A lot of homeowners think that the a septic tank is the that's it. And that's everything it. goes there and every, they yeah, pump it out every tank, once in a while. And that's right. it. Yeah. And they don't a lot of people don't understand that the tank operates at a full capacity because the inlet pipe and the outlet pipe are up high in the tank. So the tank fills up to capacity and spills over into the outlet pipe, which go to the leaching fields. And it operates that way. It operates full. So the tank is always full. So a lot of people ask, like, oh, when you pump the tank, was it full? Yeah. Or, you know, how no, full I, you know, that's How full was it? And right. it's like, well, it's a, it operates. That's, that's it's always right. full. <laughs> yeah. right. No, you know, that's a good point because I've been on multiple, you know, septic inspections with you where, you know, you pop the the, the lid open to the tank and they're like, oh, it's full, you know? And it, yeah. it's, well, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's, it's always full. Yeah. It's when the solids are really thick. That's when it's like, whoa, this thing hasn't been pumped in a while. And gotcha. it's, and then we, you know, see how bad it, it got, you know. You know, some people don't understand kind of the location and how that functions. You know, if you're building a new home, mm-hmm. per se, and you, you know, how does, how, how do you, uh, how is the site uh, picked for where the slow, you know, the septic location will be and is it based on any you know test holes test holes that are done previous to construction so if there's an original system to a house Mm -hmm. they went to that property and dug test holes with an engineer all around the property to see where the best this best suitable location is for the septic system based on the soil conditions and the layout of the property got it slope you know, a lot, a lot of it has to do with slope, and um, there's a lot of things that, that go into it. So uh, one of the things that I've, we've, I've been dealing with lately with buyers um, wanting specifically wanting to put in pools, mm-hmm. how does that function with the septic and maybe talk about kind of the rules as far as setbacks? Um, you know, can, can people put a septic next to a pool does that? How does that function? Well, the the state created a um, a, a, t- a testing. So if you went to the town to get a permit for a septic, they would tell you you have to do a B one. You have to go to the health department, get signed off. You have to do a B one hundred test, which is test holes. Test holes, yeah, right. And that determines, um, you know, usually if you have a nice sized property, and your septic system is the current one that you have is working properly, uh, it it's usually not a problem to fit in a pool. Uh, it's when the area is constricted and the septic system that's there is really old. It's not working well. Mm -hmm. So now you're looking at, okay, well now we need to go to a different area to put a septic in. Is that going to interfere with where you want to put the pool in? And the town, regardless of what the homeowner wants to do, the town will actually tell you, no, you can't put in a pool because that's where the septic system is more important. Gotcha. And they would, they would stop you from putting in the pool or, you know, but, you know, if you want to spend enough money, you can figure it out. There, there are ways to figure it out and, and get a septic system in or a new one with a pool. Let's talk about what, what happens if the system fails. Are there any remedies? So you get a phone call, middle of the night, I've got backing up in my house, you mm-hmm. know, I need, what do I do? Um, you get there, you're like, well... The system's failed. What happens from that point on? Uh, well, the first thing I'll do is pump the tank out to relieve the pressure. Mm-hmm. If it's a, there's a clogged pipe, we'll unclog it. We'll get them going so at least they could use the facilities in the house. We'll empty the tank out. If we have to, we'll, we'll dig the leaching fields up, pump those down just so they can work it because it's not like we can go in the next day and put in a new system. Again, we have to go to the health department, do test holes, right. figure out where we're going to put the new the new fields or the new tank and fields or whatever it may be um, on the property. 
a, a really important question I have when I sit down with sellers is, you know, sometimes they're deciding between, you know, uh, does it make more sense to sell or maybe remodel? Mm-hmm. And uh, walk us through, because there's a big uh, component having a septic here, is if you're doing a large remodel of a home, uh, you know, and adding a bedroom, going back to, you know, septics are based off of bedrooms. Sometimes homeowners don't understand that they may have to upgrade their system because they're adding an addition, adding a bathroom, adding right. a bedroom. Right. Um, so how how does how would that work? Um, uh, as far as the, from your standpoint, you have a system; it's functioning properly. But now we want to do this addition. Um, where does it go from you from your standpoint? It's basically it's almost like up the pool. Hmm. So you have to do a B100 test, which will show. Um, we have to do soil soil testing to see where we would put a system. If you were to put this addition on, where would would we put a system if the one you have fails? Yep. Is there enough room on the property? So a to reserve do that? space. For right. Because if you're putting on an addition and you're not going up, you're going out. You're taking mm-hmm. up property space, which, which could potentially go into future septic area. Yeah. So that needs to be determined if if it's if you have enough room on the property to expand your house, um, and, and also the size of the septic is based on bedrooms. So if someone were to do an addition, mm-hmm. make their kitchen bigger, blow out some walls, if, if, if the end result, if it's the same number of bedrooms, they don't have to upgrade their system. Got it. To accommodate so that. only if you add right. bedrooms may you be in the position yeah you could you add have to two bathrooms three bathrooms doesn't that doesn't matter. change the right in the industry do you see a lot of guys that are installers and inspectors or i know you do both yes but mostly most inspectors are installers most inspectors there are a few are. that aren't mm-hmm. uh because there's a few guys that just pump and they'll do inspections because they have a a, yeah, yeah, yeah. a license to do it so so they'll They'll pump and do inspections, but they're not installers. Are there any certifications for an inspector? You know, what are, is there any kind of education, any kind of training? I would make sure get? if you hire a septic inspector, make sure they have a septic license. Mm-hmm. Make sure they're licensed by the state of Connecticut or whatever state you're in to do what they're doing. Got it. You know, because a lot of guys will send someone out that works for them. Right. They have a license, but. They Just send someone out, hey, go do that inspection. Just because a guy's in a pump truck doesn't mean he can inspect this stuff. Most guys that are in a pump truck do not have a septic license. They just have a CDL and they're out there pumping. Right. So if you're a homeowner and you ask him, hey, is my septic, how's my septic look as he's pumping? Yeah. He may not be the right person to ask. Even Correct. Even though he works for a Right. Septic. He might be trained and good at pumping tanks, but when it comes to how the system operates and if there's anything wrong, he might not know those answers. Uh, it's not something that you want to screw around with as far as... No. Because the penalty could be a $20,000 bill. Or more. Yeah. Or more, yeah. depending on the location. These, these days, usually more. That's the price big. of everything is up. Fuel's there's up. A, all the products are up. Yep. Pipe, all that stuff. So That's a big bill not to right. be maintaining it properly, uh, having it inspected by a licensed professional. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, also right brings person. up the pumping thing. If you if you pump it every year, it's going to last longer. Clean the filter, pump it every year. Even if it's old, if it's old or new, same thing applies. Because if it's that old, if you pump it every year, yeah. you're going to get more out of it. It's a good point. Right? If it's new, it's got the filter. You got to pump it every year anyway. Right. If you go, you know, and the price of pumping it, you know, we're talking three, four hundred bucks. I mean, right, that was the next this is one of your biggest you. investments, uh, right? Uh, you know, you, for three or four hundred bucks every year, it's totally yeah. Worth you got to for, for the peace of mind, three to seven hundred thousand dollar home. I mean, for four hundred bucks a year, you have peace of mind that you're protecting your system. It's almost like insurance. Yeah. So I'll get you out of here on this. Anything that you'd like to add? Anything you'd like to uh, maybe plug or promote? Um, as far as kind of what you guys do. Um, uh, or you know maybe a project that you're working on maybe something that uh you know during your inspections or your installs that you've seen that's maybe kind of out of the blue that's that's oddballish or weird maybe some something that's the I actually just in Stratford um I got a call it a tank actually collapsed 
<laughs> an open open hole in the backyard. Kids running around. No. The tank collapsed. So I had to go there to replace replace that tank. And um, the guy has three systems on the property. On one yard? One yard, five-bedroom home, and he has three, three tanks and three separate leaching areas. And it was done that way originally. And it was done well. It was done well. It's just an older, right. you know, older tanks, older system. Um, and whoever did it did a great job back in the, you know, back in the 60s or whenever when it was done. Yeah. And um, we, well, we fixed it up. We yeah. put a new tank in and consolidated. Well, that's one of the things that you'll find here in, in the Northeast. But uh, in general, you know, in Connecticut, you see a lot of older homes. Yeah. So you must have seen. You know, you run the gamut of, you know, from a, look, I've sold a house that was built in the 1700s. So, you know, that, that would have had a set, you know, over the course of the years, you, yeah. how much septics has changed from, you know, maybe a hole in the ground right. to, you know, indoor plumbing to, you yeah. know. And people used to systems. throw uh, yeast, yeah, to, you know, for, for stuff to grow and, and right, right. eat the, you know, none of that is ap apl ap applicable. <laughs> applicable applicable there you go applicable anymore uh because you pump it you know right so there's no sense in dumping all that stuff spending money so those commercials on ridex uh <laughs> I, don't waste your money <laughs> fair enough you already don't waste first. your money don't waste just, your money on that just stuff. do what you're supposed to do in the house don't put anything foreign or excessive down the drains or, or run the water excessively and um and you'll you'll be fine you don't have to put any of that stuff down there James Mondo from Mondo Septic. We heard a lot about septics. Thank you for being here. Buyers, make sure you get inspected your septic before you buy a home. And sellers, make sure you get it pumped every year. You heard it here. Call Mondo Septic if you're in the Monroe area. Family institution. So thanks for being here, mm -hmm. and we appreciate you. Yep. Thank you.